Hello Wonderful Person, this is Anton, and as the title suggests, today we're going to be answering a relatively simple question. Could life on Earth be detected by some kind of an extraterrestrial civilization, assuming that they have relatively similar technology to what we have right now, in order to look for biosignatures and possibly technosignatures in their attempt to find some kind of a life somewhere else out there? A question that was actually explored before a long time ago, with the overall conclusion being, not really at least when it comes to detecting current technosignatures coming from planet Earth, but a question that we're going to be asking again and possibly again and again, because there's really no clear answer just yet. But in this video, we're going to be focusing on some of the recent studies, and specifically this one right here that you can find in the description below, that at least for now, try to tackle the idea of biosignatures. And actually for a very, very important reason. When it comes to trying to discover biosignatures on other objects, for example other moons, or more specifically, various types of exoplanets we've discovered in the last decade or so, there are certain preconceptions we have right now in regards to what we should be seeing or should be detecting from various exoplanets that could maybe indicate potential extraterrestrial life producing some of these biosignatures. Although at the moment, most of the research is focused on various types of gases and various types of heat emissions that here on Earth we generally associate with various types of bacterial life and thus assume that something similar might be happening on those planets as well. With gases like methane, for example, or various organic compounds usually being the main target. But quite a lot of other gases have been proposed as a potential biosignature in the past, with at least one paper that was released just a few weeks ago suggesting that methyl bromide that's often associated with a type of a defense produced by various plants, could actually be a really good biosignature as well. But this particular study that we're talking about today actually focused on something even more important, something slightly different. So let's just say that there is a planet like this one right here that might possess some kind of a extraterrestrial life somewhere on the surface. Here we're going to assume that the life is relatively simple, but does produce quite a lot of various chemicals that in theory should be observable from far away. One of the primary missions for the James Webb Telescope was to actually try to find some of these planets and potentially discover a life somewhere out there, on another planet except for planet Earth. The question is, can we? Is it physically possible for us to identify life and to definitively confirm that it's there? Well, right now it's kind of difficult to answer this question by just looking at these distant planets, even if in theory we could detect various gases here. We actually have to take a slightly trickier approach. The best way is to use Earth as a potential example of what we could and could not see by looking at it from a very distant planet. In other words, let's just say there is an alien civilization with their own version of the James Webb. Would they be able to detect life on Earth right now? Would they see the atmospheric emissions, methane, carbon dioxide, all of those other things we usually associate with the life and functioning biosphere on the planet, would it be possible for them to discern it by just looking at our planet from several light years away? And looks like, according to this paper, the answer is no. They probably would not be able to tell it apart. But let's discuss the details. So for example, we know that there are at least several different star systems out there that should be able to see planet Earth crossing the sun right here, being able to detect planet Earth in the same way we detected so many exoplanets using the Kepler telescope. However, when it comes to, for example, radio velocity, where we try to find a planet by seeing the effects as they pull on the star, we're definitely not going to be able to find planet Earth because other planets in the solar system produce much stronger pull and kind of hide the effects from our own planet, with Jupiter and Saturn being the most influential. But assuming that they do see planet Earth crossing our Sun, they will actually be able to then collect the data about the atmosphere of our planet the same way we do today. For example, you probably remember that one of the first images released by the James Webb was actually the atmospheric composition of a distant planet known as WASP-96b. In this case though, mostly water was discovered here with a few elements that do not really indicate life. And so using a very similar approach and assuming that there is some kind of a James Webb looking at planet Earth, the scientists wanted to explore what exactly are we going to be seeing if we look at our planet from, for example, different angles and at different times of the year, or basically during different seasons. In this case, focusing on planet Earth as seen from four different perspectives showing different amounts of land and also showing different amounts of water or even ice, but also during different times of the year. With the focus being the detection of things like methane, things like nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide and ozone. The four things that we kind of associate with life to some extent and also the things that we generally think James Webb can actually see really well. And as you can see from this particular graph, 
it becomes pretty clear that there is a significant seasonal variability in the overall emission spectrum from our planet depending on when exactly we're looking at it. In other words, depending on the weather conditions, we're going to be seeing very different amounts of CO2, methane and so on. But it also depends on the position of the planet or what exactly you're actually seeing. For example, if we're mostly seeing the oceans as opposed to land masses, the variability is much lower. In other words, right here, there was a lot less variability than there would be by looking at this side. Here we're talking about changes of approximately 33%. And that's because water by itself provides a kind of a thermal stability, mostly because water, as you probably know, has a very high heat capacity and so it doesn't really allow the temperature to change very quickly. Which does result in much more stable observations if looking at planet Earth and mostly seeing liquid oceans. But the more land there was, the more variability there was as well. Suggesting that if we see continents, they're going to be producing very difficult to understand results. With even more variability introduced due to seasons. Obviously, during the winter, the actual conditions would be very different from what we're seeing in the summer, making the concentrations of gases in the atmosphere very different and somewhat chaotic, preventing from establishing an overall pattern unless you know exactly what's happening here. And this of course implies that any kind of a planet with a dynamic climate, any planet that has seasons, and also any planet that does have continents and liquid water somewhere on the surface, will very likely, just like planet Earth, be almost completely impossible to interpret from a distance in regards to potential biosignatures or even in regards to various cycles of gas in the atmosphere, even independent of other factors. And there are actually so many other factors at play here. For example, in this study, they sort of ignored the idea of clouds. And we know that the cloud cover and the albedo effects also add to all of this, making the actual observations even more difficult. On top of this, as we've discussed in one of the previous videos, there is an idea of what we usually refer to as biosignature false positives. In other words, certain molecules that might actually mimic the idea of life on the surface, but could actually be produced entirely naturally. We've discussed some of these ideas in one of the previous videos you can find in the description. And so because there is no single way to describe planet Earth in terms of thermal emissions, we would naturally be facing very similar problems once more data becomes available from the James Webb telescope. Or basically, identifying biosignatures somewhere out there is still going to be very very challenging even years from now when we get more data. But we could, in theory, produce various models based on previous observations and a lot of mathematical analysis that could help us work out some of these problems. For example, we can start by trying to introduce clouds into this and then seeing how this affects the observations of planet Earth as well. And so even though most of our analysis today is usually based on a single passage of a planet in front of a star, which basically represents just part of a season, with us only seeing a part of the planet, after years of modeling and after years of mathematical analysis, it could become possible to produce models where identifying biosignatures could become a reality after all. But definitely not now and not anytime soon. This particular field is definitely still in its infancy and we still have so far to go. But we'll obviously be talking about most of these discoveries in some of the future videos as new data from the James Webb comes out and as we get more and more interesting discoveries coming from other telescopes as well. And until future discoveries, or until we learn something else, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.